Holy cow, this is insane. Starship had a soft landing during its fourth launch in an epic way and did not disappoint us. The Starship's performance was truly beyond expectations. Starship had a massive soft landing during its fourth launch in an epic way and did not disappoint us. The Starship's performance was truly beyond expectations. I couldn't believe my eyes witnessing this miracle happen. Can't wait any longer. Let's find out everything on today's episode of Alpha Tech. How did it go? And how did Elon Musk react? SpaceX's Starship, the most powerful rocket ever built, took off from a launch pad on the coast of South Texas on Thursday at 8.50 a.m. ET, with the entire launch process proceeding smoothly. And it performed its first soft landing in an astonishing manner, reminiscent of the historic moment of the Falcon 9 controlled ocean landing on Flight 9 in April 2014. The SpaceX CEO immediately congratulated the team on the successful soft landing of the Starship Super Heavy rocket booster. Feeling confident about this, the esteemed CEO also set an ambitious goal for the future. I think we should try to catch the booster with the Mechazilla arms next flight. Actually, Musk had sought to keep expectations in check beforehand, saying it had a 90% chance of landing successfully on the fourth launch of Starship. This launch marks a turning point, heralding a new milestone and opening up a historic future for this vehicle. While Musk watched from the company's launch control center, holding one of his children on his lap, the Super Heavy and Starship ascended from its pad atop a brilliant plume of fiery exhaust, racing eastward as it accelerated into the sky. Of the rocket's 33 engines, 32 lit during launch, according to the SpaceX broadcast. The vehicle soared through multiple milestones during Thursday's test flight, including the survival of the Starship capsule upon re-entry during peak heating in Earth's atmosphere and splashdown of both the capsule and booster. After separating from the spacecraft, the Super Heavy booster successfully executed the landing process for the first time. It performed a controlled descent, igniting three engines to slow its fall amid waves of cheers and applause at SpaceX's Hawthorne, California factory as the live broadcast showed the tail end of the booster splashing down into the Gulf of Mexico approximately eight minutes after launch. Meanwhile, the Starship capsule successfully achieved orbital insertion. About 50 minutes after launch, the spacecraft began its controlled re-entry journey, and an incredibly colorful buildup of plasma could be seen around the vehicle as its heat shield faced the extreme temperatures of Earth's atmosphere. The company's Starlink satellites helped facilitate a live stream that was continuously available during re-entry. A flap near the camera view on Starship appeared to scorch during re-entry, and particulate matter blocked some of the view of the camera. But in the end, there was enough of a view to see Starship achieve its expected landing burn into the Indian Ocean. Despite loss of many tiles and a damaged flap, Starship made it all the way to a soft landing in the ocean. Congratulations, SpaceX team, on an epic achievement, posted SpaceX founder and CEO Elon Musk on X. The Starship spacecraft is coated in about 18,000 lightweight ceramic hexagonal tiles, which are designed to protect the vehicle during re-entry. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson also took to X to share a post celebrating the flight. Congratulations, SpaceX, on Starship's successful test flight this morning. We are another step closer to returning humanity to the moon through Artemis, then looking onward to Mars," Nelson posted. The launch was initially expected to occur at 8.20 a.m. ET, but SpaceX's red team was sent in to fix a groundside issue, which caused the delay, according to the company's live stream. The flight test comes two days after the Federal Aviation Administration, which licenses commercial rocket launches, gave SpaceX its approval. The test is occurring one day after SpaceX's competitor under NASA's commercial crew program, Boeing, successfully launched the first crewed mission of Starliner, which is carrying two veteran NASA astronauts to the International Space Station. Each of Starship's test flights has different objectives that build on lessons learned and milestones achieved during the previous flight. The Starship team made software and hardware upgrades to the launch system to incorporate lessons learned from the third flight. The fourth flight of Starship will aim to bring us closer to the rapidly reusable future on the horizon, according to SpaceX. We're continuing to rapidly develop Starship, 
putting flight hardware in a flight environment to learn as quickly as possible as we build a fully reusable transportation system designed to carry crew and cargo to Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars, and beyond. During three previous flights, two in 2023 and the most recent in March, the Super Heavy and Starship stages suffered catastrophic failures before all the test objectives could be met. But with each flight, SpaceX implemented hardware and software upgrades that resulted in dramatically improved performance. In the third test flight, the Starship upper stage made it into space, looped around the planet, and began a planned descent over the Indian Ocean before breaking up in the upper atmosphere. The Super Heavy booster made it back into the lower atmosphere over the Gulf of Mexico before control was lost. But SpaceX hailed the flight as an overall success and made more changes to improve performance during Thursday's test. Getting the Super Heavy Starship flying on a regular basis is critical to NASA's Artemis Moon program. NASA awarded SpaceX a $2.9 billion contract in 2021 to develop a variant of the Starship upper stage to carry astronauts from lunar orbit down to the surface and back. Artemis crews will travel to and from the Moon using Lockheed Martin-built Orion capsules. To reach the Moon, multiple super-heavy tanker flights will have to be launched to robotically refuel a Starship upper stage already in low Earth orbit. The Starship lander then will fly itself to lunar orbit to await the Artemis moonwalkers. NASA's contract requires one unpiloted lunar landing test flight before astronauts will make an actual landing attempt. Artemis managers are targeting late 2026 for the first lunar landing with astronauts on board. But that will depend on SpaceX launching enough super-heavy Starship flights to demonstrate reliability. While SpaceX's philosophy is to fly frequently, learn from mistakes, and fly again, NASA will require a long string of successful flights before the agency will deem it safe to put astronauts aboard. And to ensure that Starship services are fully provided for this mission, SpaceX decided to launch Starship from more than one launch tower that they currently have. The company is in the process of building a second tower down at Starbase. They manufactured additional segments and components at their facilities at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida and have barged them down to Texas. A collection of four tower segments shipped earlier this year and this week, they loaded two more segments onto the barge, along with the chopsticks and their elevator system supports. Watson Morgan, the manager of the Human Landing System program, said the propellant transfer mission could be conducted from two towers at Starbase, but NASA is very interested in making sure that Starship launch capabilities come online at KSC as well. Next week, the FAA will host public scoping meetings to gather input on allowing around 44 Starship launches per year from historic launch complex 39A. Simultaneously, the Department of the Air Force is also doing a similar assessment for Starship launches from either Space Launch Complex 37, which is the former launch site of United Launch Alliance's Delta IV heavy rocket, or from a proposed new launch pad called SLC-50. We definitely want to see that. We have to see it by the uncrewed demo for sure, and clearly, we'd like to see that before to make sure that everything checks out," Watson Morgan said. We will go ahead and have pad checkouts and all that and operational readiness reviews in advance of it. As they're developing the human-rated version of Starship, they're also gathering input from the astronaut office, which is located at NASA's Johnson Space Center. Watson Morgan, referring to them as the crew for shorthand, said the office offers insight and opinions on the functionality of certain parts of the vehicle, like interface, control system, and location of handles. Watson Morgan said that they also have members of the astronaut office on their control board. We have a human landing system control board where any requirements changes or updates or how things are implemented get to go through their formal board actions and the crew's a voting member, she said. On April 30th, at the SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, NASA astronaut Doug Wheels Wheelock and Axiom space astronaut Peggy Whitson performed the first integrated test of Axiom's pressurized spacesuits alongside mock-ups of a Starship elevator and the airlock. Overall, I was pleased with the astronauts' operation of the control panel and with their ability to perform the difficult tasks they will have to do before stepping onto the moon, said Logan Kennedy lead for surface activities in NASA's HLS program, in a statement. 
The test also confirmed that the amount of space available in the airlock, on the deck, and in the elevator are sufficient for the work our astronauts plan to do. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.